Yep. Okay, calling the meeting to order. The meeting, this meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Department, Board of Commissioners is being videotaped at RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading Mass for distribution to the community television stations in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name, address prior to speaking. It's the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. All right. Introductions. We have uh, Neil Cohen from the Citizens Advisory Board here. Welcome, Neil. Thank you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Mm -hmm. And we also have <coughs> Vanessa Alvarado, um, the Select Board liaison, is also here. Welcome, Vanessa. And we also have the, the chair of the Select Board, Andy Friedman, as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil Pacino, will you be secretary for us tonight? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. And now we're going to open it up. Uh, well, we'll get public comment. We'll start with you, Neil, from the Citizens Advisory Board. Any comments from your group? Uh, no, there's no comments. Okay, no comments. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, Vanessa, do you have any comments at this time? No, thank you. All right. And is there any other public comment? Doesn't look like we have any public here. Any other public comment? Mm -hmm. Unless Andy wants to make a comment? No. <laughs> All right, he's good. Okay. And then we'll go right to the presentation of the fiscal year 2018 audit. And we're going to welcome Zach Ventros from Alanson Heath and PNC. Thank you for having me. Um, as Dave just said, my name is Zach Ventros, and I was the audit manager in charge of the June 30, 2018 uh, Reading Municipal Light Department audit. Um, if any of you have any questions, feel free to stop me, and we can go over them at that time. Uh, first, before we get started, I just want to state that uh, the financial statements are not presented on a comparative basis this year, and uh, that is in uh, um, uh, that was done to um, be in accordance with an AICPA recommendation to not present comparative financial statements due to the implementation of Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 75 this year. We'll get into Governmental Accounting Statement uh, Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 75 in a little bit. If I could, I'd like to have you turn to the first page after the table of contents. This is the first page of the independent auditor's report. The department has received a clean opinion. There are no exceptions, and this is the best opinion you can receive from an independent audit firm, and it is the same opinion that the, opinion, the, excuse me, that the department has received in prior years. If I could, I'd like to have you turn to page three, which is the first page of management's discussion and analysis. So pages three through six are the management's discussion and analysis. And this is essentially just a summary of the results of operations. This section also discusses any major financial areas. So instead of simply reading this to you, if I could, I'd like to have you turn to page 7, which is the statement in that position where we'll discuss the same things there that are discussed here in the management's discussion and analysis. The financial statements... Um, speaking are, are very comparable from from year to year except for the the couple items that I'm going to highlight to you to you now so the very first one that um, I'd like to bring to your attention about a quarter of the way down the page it's under non-current assets and it, it is titled capital assets net of accumulated depreciation and that has a balance of seventy six million nine hundred and eighty eight thousand this is actually about a two point one million dollar increase over the prior year and the major capital project item that, that the department worked on this year was the completion of the LED street light project. And that had an a, a increase to that line item of $715,000. The next line item I'd like to bring to your attention is about maybe a, a halfway down the page under non-current liabilities. And it's the first line item there, and it says uh, it is titled net pension liability, and that has a balance of 10 million 781,000, and this represents the RMLD's portion of the total unfunded liability for the Reading Contributory Retirement System. The department's portion of that liability is about 29%. Um, and the Reading Contributory Retirement System is approximately 79% funded, which is 
uh, higher than average in the Commonwealth. The average in the Commonwealth is between 65 and 70 percent. So having a, a retirement system funded at, at 79 percent is an advantageous position uh, for the department uh, to be involved with. The next line item I'd like to bring to your attention is net OPEB liability. And OPEB stands for Other Post-Employment Benefits. And that has a balance of 7158000 This is the big change from 2017 to 2018. And, and this big change is due to the implementation of Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 75. And Statement Number 75 is going to supersede Statement Number 45. This liability was recognized over a 30-year period under st in accordance with Statement Number 45. However, with Statement 75 that supersedes 45, that liability is now going to be recognized in full. So essentially what this is doing is pulling the liability that was presented in the back of the financial statements now to the front of the financial statements and on page seven. Uh, the users of the financial statements aren't going to be um, surprised by this figure. They were well aware that this figure existed. Um, and, and RMLD is not alone with the implementation of, of this accounting standard. Every municipality in the United States will have to implement this moving forward. On, on the bright side, the system has put funds aside. And as of June 30, 2017, there was approximately two point, uh, I believe, bear with me a moment, it was $2.8 million, almost $2.9 million that they had set aside to begin to fund this liability. And that has a funding ratio of about 28.5%. This is a, an advantageous position for the department to be in. Um, in, in the Commonwealth, having other post-employment benefit liabilities that well-funded is rare. Uh, on the town side, but on the light department side, that's about average. So again, that's a strong position for the light department to be in. That pretty much concludes everything I wanted to bring to your attention. Like I said, the, the, the balances from 2017 to 2018 were very comparative. Um, in, in conclusion, I think that the, the things you should take away from this presentation is that the department had positive operating results. It has a well-funded uh, OPEB trust fund, and there's no management letter. And what a management letter is, is if um, during our audit process, we look at the internal controls to ensure that assets are appropriately safeguarded. And if a recommendation would be, if we had a recommendation how to improve those internal controls, we would recommend them in a formal management letter. Uh, the department did not have any management letter this year, and it's consistent with uh, the prior years. There has not been a management letter in a number of years, and it shows that uh, the management of the department takes internal controls very seriously and ensures that they are working uh, adequately uh, throughout the year. Okay, okay great. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll chair of the Audit Committee, Phil? Yes. Um, so the Audit Committee for the Town of Reading and the Board's Audit Committee, Mr. Stempeck and myself, Thank you. met before this meeting tonight uh, to review in more depth what uh, Zach has just presented. Uh, a couple items that I want to bring to the Board's attention, to the Commission's attention, is Zach kind of did a back of the envelope calculation on, on the operating cash. That is correct. And basically, he came up with a number that available, and I'll make sure I got this right, that um, it's about two, 2.3 months of operating cash available. And actually, the industry standard is three months. Um, so actually, the department has available enough cash to fund operate, operating cash for about 2.3 2 months each, each in, in terms of what it has available cash. And we can go over the details on that if anybody would like to. Uh, the operating, the audit committee also had three requests that they brought up. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about the actuarial assumptions and the rate of return um, and that was on the, the uh, that's been used for the actuarial assumption. So they actually had three requests. Uh, there's actually the investment rate used in the act in the uh, the actuarial computation is seven and a half percent. The question has come up, and the the audit committee has asked the board and the department to look into why seven and a half percent. They also ask, you know, what the maybe what the asset mix uh, benchmark is to look at that in terms of there's some sort of benchmark on that. And also there was a question on if there's a percentage of fees that are there. Uh, the, the concern that the audit, the audit firm raised was that the actual report is a seven and a half percent and we're only earning about two percent if I got all the numbers right. So, and that was the concern that's been raised and the audit committee has requested the commission to kind of look into those three areas. And I do recommend, I do, it was a sense of the, the audit committee to look into that. 
and I do recommend that you know that we 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 instruct the department to look into it. Okay. I don't think we can take a formal vote on it. We don't have to. I, I think you know yeah. unless there's any objection, I think Colleen can just do it as a sense of the board. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I guess just for information for those listening in, so it's a recommendation, but it really is uh, the responsibility of the town in the respect that they manage and process the cash. Is that correct, Phil? Right. Yeah, because everything is done through the town treasurer. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, okay. I think they're all very good questions. Yeah, uh, yes. to ask and too. can we get a higher return? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we change the discount rate? Mm -hmm. uh, and what impact might that might have? Yeah. And what, by asset class, uh, what kind of returns are are we getting? And are we positioned correctly with a mix uh, in our portfolio yeah. as a town? And just just to add, there, you know, as Zach mentioned, there is no uh, there is no management letter of anything that we need to improve on and. Uh, Zach was very complimentary of Wendy and her staff. Nice so. to done, Wendy. <laughs> and Zach. Okay, and Colleen too. I should I should say she's very complimentary. Um, Colleen. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll move that the uh, RMLD Board of Commissioners accept the audit report from Melanson Heath fiscal year ended June 30, 2018, as presented. Okay, you have a second. Second. Okay. All the oh discussion. All those in favor. Okay. Zero. Motion carries five zero zero. Okay, great. Um, Very good. Yes. Can I just ask clarification? Did you assign me an action item for those three questions? Yes. Oh, you did. Yes. I saw yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Colleen, I can certainly give you a hand with that. Yeah, I sure. had them down to to look at them, so I will speak with you and Wendy. I'll I'll, I'll keep you in the loop, yeah. and we can discuss uh, what I come up with, and and we'll move forward with that. Does that work for you? Yeah, Mr. Chair? of course, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, no, so I'm just curious, so what, what's particularly Colleen's action? Do you want to restate that? Yeah, Phil? Colleen is actually, there were three items that um, that the audit committee has requested that right. the commission look into and also the department. One is if there's any uh, sort of fees that we're paying on the investments, the percentage, uh, what's the magic, basically what's the magic behind the 7.5% that's using the assumption because of the fact that we're earning a less rate and also the um, if there's some sort of benchmark on the on the asset mix yeah. as Is to that, yeah yeah but I mean that I guess just a point of clarification so the action would be for calling to contact the town accountant that's right? correct or the town yeah. treasurer as opposed yeah. to uh, okay that's correct uh, that's yeah. correct and, and you also wanted to know if it was available the the return on on each class and on each major class of, For last of assets, year, right? Right. 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 Okay. That's correct. <clears throat> okay. Got it. Good. All right. Very good. Any other questions? Well, oh, you up? Wasn't there one more where we were going to find out whether money that's sitting in cash in our accounts could be uh, could be invested in a municipal bond, either yeah. locally or oh, yeah. from another town, yeah. a high-rated bond? Yeah. Yes. Saving fees, saving the town something, while well, we make a little bit more than the whatever. Yes, we. Yeah. So cash. I've already assigned Chris Pollitt, uh, Council, uh, mm -hmm. a question to ask: the funds that are available, are any of the funds available for potential uh, borrowing? And Chris is going to look into that. We said pension, no, but he'll look at the other funds that are available, and he'll get us back, get back to us on that. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Great. Very good. All right. I guess we are all set. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you for when are we going to see you again, it. Zach? How many Absolutely. months? <laughs> Less than a month. <laughs> <laughs> Less than a month. Good all right. See thank ya. you. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going back to you again, Phil, here. Right. Um, so here. We need to base the vote on that, right? No, I think we voted. We, took, we, we did. Voted. We took the vote. We voted. Yeah. We voted. We did after discussion. We did before discussion and after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the second discussion threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> So Sorry. we have the Citizen Advisory Board meeting on yeah. November 14th, so, Phil? Yeah, I attended the Citizen Advisory Board, and, and Neil, if I get anything wrong, please correct me, <laughs> okay? Sorry. Um, and basically at that meeting, we, we uh, yeah, Mr. Underhill was introduced at that meeting as the uh, new director, who you'll, you'll hear from a little bit later on. Uh, and also there was, uh, we kind of went over the, you know, the pre different presentations from Hamid and, and Colleen. Uh, one of the items that was discussed, and it's kind of mixing into the next item too, um, and the 
on the, the last payment on the, the subcommittee. Do you want to just go to the next item? Yeah, we can, if we want. We'll just go to, that's yeah, a good segue. Yeah, yeah I, I all right, so the that. subcommittee on the payment to the town of right. Reading, that was presented at town meeting, and it sounds right. like the CAB so, had a discussion about it as well. Well, yeah, so the, the last, let me go back, actually, the, the subcommittee on the payment to town at, did have a meeting since our last meeting. We did meet. Um, the study that you have here that uh, Colleen put together was uh, just basically, you know, presented, um, not really presented formally, but, you know, a question, you know, whether anybody had any questions. There were no questions that, that came up on that. And um, there was also some uh, follow-up spreadsheets. Some follow-up spreadsheets. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, different good. scenarios. Thank you. Keep me, keep me straight. Discount. Keep me straight. <laughs> um, and so one of the, the representative of the uh, select board actually came up with the request that um, he was concerned about what was presented in the study and he basically asked that the um, so that the CS advisory board consider um, bringing in a mediator uh, on that that was his or request a facilitator yes. facilitator um, so and the meeting kind of broke up after that quite truthfully um, I was hoping we'd have a little bit more discussion but apparently we did not so anyway, I met. I went to the um, Citizen Advisory Board and uh, had a discussion with them about the potential use of a mediator facilitator. Uh, con and there were three members there, Neil being one of them. Um, and the concern, I mean, one of the concerns that was expressed by the chair was he was concerned about any additional costs that may go to the ratepayers. He said, you know, he wanted to make sure there was not any additional cost of this going to the ratepayers. That was one of his one of the, he expressed that opinion. Uh, the the members there also expressed the opinion that they weren't sure what a mediator would be doing, since um, there is no counter proposal. There's no counter proposal. All we have is just at this point, and we're also going to discuss it further on, is just Mr. Stenpeck's and Mr. My opinion and Mr. Stenpeck and my own opinions as to what we think should be done. At the present time, we have no presentation, from, no proposal from the select board at this point. So there's really nothing to, at this point, they said they weren't sure what there is to mediate. And, you know, and so that's one of the things that, you know, at this point that, you know, we need to maybe kind of move this discussion along. Okay. Um, I might add just a few ahead. things to that. <clears throat> and that's if you look at the notes from back in 1990, I believe, yep. which uh, talked about uh, mm -hmm. use of a facilitator or mediator. Uh, it did suggest that the uh, subcommittee needed to vote on whether to hire one in the first place. So right. it wasn't just a, let's right. get a, a mediator. We need to have right. the members of the subcommittee vote that they decided that they needed one. So that was not discussed uh, at the meeting. The other thing was um, the mediator or facilitator uh, would be hired at a maximum of five thousand um, dollars, which um, for to find a mediator of the right quality level, uh, with the number of years uh, in the industry, to understand the dynamics and dimensions of the RMLD, uh, as well as the town, uh, I think would be very difficult to find in the first place. Just my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody will work for five thousand dollars to do that. <laughs> so so we're, we got some, some issues just as uh, sort of circling around uh, what was proposed 20 years ago. Right. And so as a, as a mechanism to try and move away from that and to get to some reasonable um, uh, mediation of our own uh, with the subcommittee and hopefully with the town, we have a proposal yeah. to make. So just, just a con uh, few things. One of the things that also happened after that meeting was that we there was a request also that um, each group go back to its own individual groups and have a discussion as to what they wanted to bring forward and to come back to the subcommittee on that so the subcommittee have something to discuss so kind of in that vein um, I, I have Chair, a motion right? can I just ask you yeah. wh where, where was that request made that that we go back to the respective bodies and make a suggestion? That was a discussion that took place afterwards that it was a recommendation that uh, came through an email. An email? Yeah, through an email. I mean, it wasn't I, formally at the meeting. Yeah, but I guess that's the one okay. thing I, I mean, I have concerns about is that, about the process, I guess. So, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I felt it was a good good request, though, yeah. that no each doubt. group go back, yeah. each group go back and talk about, you know, among themselves where they wanted to go. 
like I said, I, I was hoping at the subcommittee meeting we'd have much more discussion, but we really didn't get discussion at that meeting, um, much to my regret at that point. Um, so kind of in that vein, um, I have a motion that I'd like to make at this point, Mr. M Mr. Chair. All right. Okay. Move that the Board of Commission, that the RMLD Board of Commissioners propose a recommendation. Now, I want to stress the word recommendation to the subcommittee on the payment on the payment to the town of Reading that the RMLD make a constant below the line payment to the town of Reading for two years, uh, 2019 and 2020, at the existing payment payment made for fiscal for the year the 2000. nominal the nominal payment right the the same, no, right the same. which is approximately 2.48 million dollars the payment may be subject to any emergency issues such as severe weather damage or other catastrophic events faced by the RMLD the payments are to be effective and I'm actually going to change this to uh, for periods after July 2nd 2019 so it does not affect any of the current payments in addition um, we move to uh, commission an independent consultant in 2019 to review the RMLD strategic study on May 2018 prepared by the GM by the RMLD general manager and to propose a transition plan for the year 2020 that provides an algorithm for calculating the below the line payment to the town of Reading that is based on kilowatt hour sales which is actual energy actual energy usage or some other applicable formula that's okay. a motion that I move, Mr. Chairman. All right. So do we have a second on that? Second. All right. So discussion. So let me, let, me just, let me just discuss. The idea is to get at least something to go forward. I'm hoping that the subcommittee can kind of come to a, a meeting of the minds and come up with something that we all can agree on. Okay. But at least I'm trying to stimulate and get something going forward. You know, if I can add point. to that? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, this, this fixed payment, I think, is a, a good mechanism because it gives the town a, a known amount for their fiscal planning purposes for two years. If there's one thing that's been stressed continuously, certainly in the time frame that I've been here, is that the town wants to know what they're going to receive on a yearly basis, whereas we're in an environment where our revenue is decreasing and we're subject to all kinds of other things happening in the world. Uh, so we can't predict, but we're trying to provide a high enough level to the town so that they can work with that and they know they incorporate it into their budget. It doesn't cri cripple the capital investment reinvestment program that RMLD uh, has in place and it allows RMLD to remain within its charter to serve four towns. This is not just about Reading. This is about four towns that we have to serve. It gives the town of Reading a head start for purposes of economic development to find, entice, and bring new electricity users to Reading. And by the way, our other three towns that we serve, that's true for them as well. So while we're painting a picture, you know, with this decreasing electricity usage, which is having a ripple effect to everybody, if there was a turnaround and there was more economic development in our four town area that would increase the electricity sales, we actually might find it might go up. So there is that possibility. So it's not all downside. Um, with an increase in kilowatt hour sales, I just mentioned that it might increase, uh, and the town and RMLD can examine and implement programs to increase electricity usage uh, without hurting major uh, other issues such as shave the peak. I mean, right? We could, if we stopped shaving the peak, we'd use a lot more electricity, <laughs> but our rates would go through the roof. So we have to kind of do the balance of don't hurt that one while we're trying to develop more uh, economic development within the town. So, you know, we're all on the same team here. We're really trying right. to do the right thing. And we thought this would be a reasonable proposal moving forward uh, that hopefully everyone can agree to and we can just put in place and move forward. Can I just ask a clarifying question about this, mm -hmm. your motion? Yep. Um, so the payment would say the same. So we've already, Wendy, we've paid this year already. We've already paid through this year. We have paid through uh, December 31st. So when Phil's motion for two years, the payment would say the same at $2.48 million. That means how, we'd have four more payments. So we're going to make another payment at the end of the year. Because you do half payments. Months. Yeah. Right. And that's Okay, and then so that's what it would be the same same right. payments, four right. more payments, and then the study 
would just be about how to implement the transition, even though that would not happen in the next two well, years. The, even study, if the study also would be looking at the strategic, just looking at the report that Colleen has done. And then if there's any other thing they see in that report to, <coughs> to come back. It's really building on the report, the effort right. that was already done. And we, th right. we think of it as a transition uh, report, uh, which would be an independent party uh, performing it. Right. Uh, so that uh, there would be no no question about uh, right, and it's, it wouldn't take two years to do. It's no, just, we no, would not lock in the payment no. for two years, and any change that would happen would happen in year three. Correct. Okay. So it but could be plus or minus. I mean, everyone thinks it's going to be minus. I certainly, I mean, the trends suggest it's going to be negative. We certainly don't want it to be negative. And if there's anything we can do to turn it around, right. we'll try our best to do that. But the also yep. also the, the the thing would be to stimulate some more discussion. So at we the would subcommittee. Act at the subcommittee. Okay. So we would have something that I can go back with and say, this is what the commission says. So this is just a recommendation. This to is the a recommendation to the subcommittee. This all this is. This is just this a is not a final thing. This is not, not a, a final thing. thing. No. It's not a final thing. Okay. It's just a recommendation to the subcommittee. But so I have something. But to go that back said, on. that said, time is of the essence. Right. And we need to get right. people to shake hands and agree right. that this is the right way to move. Right. We all agree about it, and we move forward and stop spending time on committees and studies and things that just keep going over the same old thing. In the meantime, our revenue keeps declining. Right. Yes. For the following year. Be the same. We're, 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 saying, we're saying the we're next saying four the payments will be the same as if the one you just made. If that proposal is accepted. If it's accepted. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, I see okay. what you're saying. Okay. So if the subcommittee to... moves that and we vote on it, yeah. yeah. Right. So, that we know what our July so you need to know by when? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the payment date. Right, but I would hope that's see what she's, she's operating would, on the normal calendar. <laughs> but I would hope that's something we could work out in the in the subcommittee too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I imagine you guys have some questions over here, yeah. and there might be some comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I just uh, if these are I guess notes for the for the subcommittee. Uh, I think because we're on a different fiscal year and everything else I think it should be clear at what point the last frozen payment is made if I can say it that way because so, for example you make a December 30th end of year payment is that for 2021 so we just need to be really clear because that that can be confusing uh, I just also would it whatever gets hopefully finalized with the subcommittee and subsequently voted I think it would be useful this notion of the town collaborating I think it's more than a I think we all believe more than platitudes so I'm not suggesting it necessarily as a committee but I, I don't nothing happens without an intervention so I, I think if, we, if we're sincere about economic development with the town we know and I know Dave has expertise in this area we know other towns that reap enormous rewards uh, I mean uh, utilities from collaboration with the town that could alone, you know, mitigate most or all of the concerns. So I, I think some way to formalize that, whether it's part of a report in each meeting, I, I really believe that otherwise it, it just won't happen. It'll get buried, you know, like a lot of other good ideas. Uh, the other thing is uh, I think when we do finally move into the next payment beyond the frozen payments, I think a mechanism, since it's not going to be as predictable as the past where you just take the base and add, because uh, that's very predictable. You know you're always were going to get X plus, just yeah. plus whatever. Yeah. So uh, if I'm in the town, I think I'd like to know uh, six months in advance or something, I don't know what the number is, when, when, I, when that payment amount will be known because they have to budget things in the town. They have to make decisions on, right. on personnel and everything else. So I think that should be part of the discussion at the subcommittee. Right. So th those like are might be a year notice of any change well, coming or something? Well, I think that might not be realistic for RMLD, but yeah. maybe, maybe a six months notice. So January 1 or whatever, or June 30th of the following year, the rate will be, or as close as we can payment predict it, this. payment, yeah. especially if it's going to vary in any degree, up or down, just so they can, again, do their planning. Yeah. Yes. So, just so I'm clear on this. So if we went with this, there are five more half payments. Is that okay? right, Wendy? There's so five there's more half, half payments? That's correct. Another half oh, yeah, Wendy, payment. Come on. Yeah, come on up. Another half a payment that's in December. Then a full Next month. Next okay. month. 
then a payment next year in July, a payment next year in December, the following July, the following December. Well, that would be right. two and a half years or not really? You think it's like yes. Well, we, we still owe the other half of this year, so it's a total of okay. $6.2 million. Right. Okay, go ahead. So to uh, Mr. O'Rourke's point, uh, he's correct. So the, the reason we're moving to a calendar year is to get more in sync. So if we go with the two years, we will be out of sync. So we'd have to decide, is it going to be so we've already committed to this payment that we're going to make uh, on January 1. We've committed. It's done. Right. So then we have to decide, are we making three more payments or five more payments okay. to get in sync with the calendar year All right. Okay. to stay steady? Uh, well, do you want to modify, based on that information, do you want to I, modify I, the motion in I some way? I think that's something that needs to be discussed. You could, the the committee could do that. Yeah, the subcommittee. Yeah. So the last I mean, payment I, would end in July. I, and it pays in advance right. through December 31st. So the reason why I said it, it, it wouldn't affect any payments in periods after July 2nd. So therefore, the payment due December third, the December will be the same, and that first payment in July would be the same. That's my that's my. So then thought. you're thinking there's two more payments after that, and that would be well potentially be potentially two or maybe maybe another. You, you know, we'd be examining this on a yearly basis, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we had the formula is right. it'd be this amount, and we'd examine it. So if you know a substation blew up, well, that affects everything, right? Because that's got a huge cost for us, yep. and the payment would definitely go down. If it, 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 electricity usage spiked because Wilmington put in three more analog devices, then absolutely, maybe the payment would rise uh, off of that basis, or uh, North Reading, or some other town. We don't think that that's going to happen because we did some backward calculations uh, in terms of what it would take to offset 1% loss, if I'm correct here. And I think it was somewhere around we need to add 20,000 residential facilities. Correct me if I'm wrong, Colleen or 80 new commercial uh, establishments. Over time to, to offset Over time to offset a 1% steady yeah, decrease. That was, may I speak? Yeah. If it's 1% decrease per year for five years, uh, that's what you would need to offset. For um, five years, okay, excuse like me, that's if, correct. If I can clarify. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Right now we make half payments in July and December of a calendar year. So if we switch to a calendar year, it should shouldn't have any impact. We're still making the full payment in a calendar year. No? We're paying in advance of the next six months. So the payment that we would be paying at the end of the year is reflective of, uh, um, of a commitment for January through June. Of 19. <laughs> okay. May I? She may I, uh, I thought I asked this question. <laughs> we yeah. keep finding ahead. new no, things here. <laughs> Dave. Uh, okay. Thanks. Um, so this proposal reflects a lot of great thought. I have a lot of respect for, um, and it's well reasoned. And it there's been a lot of hard work put into this, and the discussion has been excellent just now uh, by the people who've talked about giving the sense of what the department and what the uh, members of the commission are thinking about. Um, the one thing I would point out is that just as a matter of process, um, the the motion that was just read is you know it's not on the agenda, and. So I think that it would be better to have the discussion have been aired. It, it, it's good that the discussion was aired, but, that, but, to, but to be voting on something tonight when there wasn't an action item on the agenda or the text of the motion, to me, leads me to not want to take a vote. Um, that it's more appropriate that we've given the sense of members of the commission to the subcommittee and that it should go there and there should be a public process where it's it's sort of on the agenda well, formally. If, if, well, if you wish to call it a resolution and charge us with, as members of the subcommittee, to take it to the subcommittee uh, for testing, yeah. right. that's fine too. Well, yeah, that, that would work. The, the thing is, as worded, it's 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 a recommendation of the full board, which essentially says that you know for the first time after 20 years we're we're as a body we're voting to change the payment and effectively end these increases that have been in, which is a, a fairly momentous. Um, step yeah, and it, 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 it just, all I'm saying is that I would rather that this was on the agenda and was on the agenda at the December meeting um, after hearing the sense of the board getting the resolution at getting a finality out of the subcommittee and then coming back to us with on, a, on, on if, if I may yeah um, having sat through the subcommittee yeah, yeah. a couple of times mm -hmm. resolution seems to be a hard thing to get to uh, and so without having a fact set that's involved, okay. having everyone read the fact set, having differing opinions and some data not being presented yep. uh, by various participants, 
uh, we have to move this forward. We have to yep. take the bull by the horns yes. and just move this forward. That's my personal opinion. I think it's Phil's personal opinion. Right. And so we're asking basically the rest of the, the board here to support us in moving this forward. Right. And uh, we'll take it as a resolution. We'll present it right. to the subcommittee and see what happens. And yeah. we, yeah. we and don't want it to stall. Yeah. I mean, it's stalled so, so for a long time. My, Mr. Chief, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My, my, forget about the, the functionality of the subcommittee or how well that's working, because it hasn't worked very well. It needs to be brought to a close, but leaving that aside, it's still, I come back to the fact that it's a motion that was just read that isn't on the agenda on a momentous item and that there should, there should be a posting of it and an opportunity for comment and that all, I would just prefer that, that the motion was published and was at our next meeting and, you know, we just got it now and the public is just hearing about it now. And even though it's a resolution or recommendation, it's still like the board saying we want to change the payment and it's just happening at the meeting. Oh. So it's just really a public process question. So for that reason. Uh, yeah, Mr. I, I'm Mr. sorry, Chair, I must Mr. just. Mr. Just, Mr. Chairman, yeah, let, yeah. Let, me, let me. This okay. is, you know, understand that we're not changing anything. Nothing is changing. Well, All we're doing is making, sending you off, the, this is the board's recommendation. The select board should come back with their own recommendation and then we can have a meeting of the minds, I would hope. So that this was is just that a charge to go to the subcommittee with right, an correct. idea. And that's it's just correct. So yeah. that we've got, you know, so that we get at least moving on this. I mean, there well, is, do we, there do is we a even, uh, there do is we a even have to vote on it? There is a concern that I have about delaying. The select board's representative is not running for re-election. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that's going to affect the subcommittee going forward at this point um, on that. Um, so, you know, and, you know, time is not our friend. Can you read the motion again? Okay. I can amend it to make it a resolution if you okay. want. Well, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So the motion that I read is move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners propose a recommendation to the subcommittee on the payment to the Town of Reading that the RMLD make a constant below-the-line payment to the Town of Reading for two years, 2019 and 2020, at the existing payment made for year 2018 which was $2.48 million. This payment may be subject to any emergency issues such as severe weather damage or other catastrophic events faced by the RMLD. The payment to be effective for periods after July 2nd, 2019. In addition, move to commission an independent consultant in 2019 to review the RMLD strategic study of May 2018 prepared by the RMLD general manager and to propose a transition plan for the year 2021 that provides an algorithm for calculating the above the line payment of the town of Reading that is based on kilowatt sales which is actual energy usage or some other applicable formula. Yeah. Okay. It's Colleen below the line. Yeah, it's below. What I say below above the line? line? Yeah. It should yeah. be below the line, okay. correct? That's, That's what, what didn't I say that? Yeah. I thought you had. But didn't I say you, that? You meant it's, below the line. It's the, it's in it's in the it's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word. And then Tom, you have a comment. Yeah, just David, a couple of quick. I, I think, following on Dave said, I think a little bit of the confusion. In hindsight, we probably should have had the discussion followed by the motion instead of the motion. Even we didn't vote in the motion. But <laughs> that's just a future process. Right. Uh, I was just going to say because I can see this will definitely <laughs> become a, a problem and I don't mean to be, sound overly simplistic but maybe the subcommittee could create a, a little chart with December 30th 2018 and what the payment will be June 2019 what the payment will be December 2019 what the payment is in June 2020 what the payment is and if all those are frozen at that rate you just plug them in then it's memorialized because Believe me, if we use calendar years, people are going to be thinking, uh, you know, town fiscal years. And then whatever the new payment's going to be, it's not known. The, the next payment, December 2020, can say 2 TBD payment. Right. So you're saying just if they do, the subcommittee reviews this, come back with the date and the payments. Uh, Four a little days, chart, five days, whatever right, it is. A little yeah. chart. Right. Forget okay. the words. Uh, we use the word, but the chart. The chart, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dave, I have a question for I you. I think that... Would you, uh, Good. Chair? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Would you like me to just prepare that so it's visual for for when sure. you go to yeah, the subcommittee? Sure. That'd be great. I'm sure. happy to do that. Thank sorry. you. And Dave, if if we follow the process correctly, would have would you would have been okay with this? 
Um, Do you, are you okay I, with I, this in spirit, I guess, is my question. I, I think so. It's, again, it's, it's more that um, I wish this had been a discussion from the experts who have been on the committee and that we were, we were, it was on the agenda and there was public comment and after that is the proper time to be voting on a sort of essentially a, a change in policy of this, of this magnitude. Mm. Because it's essentially saying, I know it's a recommendation. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's the it's just to move the ball down the it's field a, a little bit. It's a proposed but it's still like the, it, the request is for the full board to basically say, we're we're stopping what we've been doing for twenty years. We're, we're but, changing it. But right. so, someone's got to do something. Someone's got to move it forward and put a stake in the ground. Yeah. I was and if we don't put a stake in the ground, no stakes will occur. I'm saying, yeah. all, I'm, all I'm saying is it, it it's a process. It should be on the agenda, and that's all. Yeah. Just may I go ahead? So. I agree with both of you. I think that the process could have been a little different from discussion, but I also agree. I mean, those of us who sit in town meeting, I mean, for, for reasons we don't have, it's not about blaming anyone. Collectively, all of us involved, it's taken too long. So something has to be done. I don't view this as a vote. Uh, the, to me, the opportunity for public uh, comment is after the subcommittee meets and they come back with a refined final recommendation, then that goes back to here we have that discussion and that's public meeting appropriate and it has to go back to the cab so and and per the comment excuse me but if I may yeah per, per the comment of taking it back to our respective groups uh, we did bring it back to our respective group we're discussing it right now we would ask that the selectmen take it back to their group and talk about it as well right. And, right. And, and then CAB, we and get the CAB also and the CAB, CAB excuse CAB, me and, and the CAB uh, mm -hmm. as well right. so <laughs> We got to move the ball forward. Right, here. Uh, Neil. Do you want to make a comment from a CAB from perspective? We, well, we only had three members at the board in the last meeting, as Phil said. So, Phil made a presentation, and we listened, and we, you know, talked a little bit about it. But we didn't make any type of vote, resolution, or anything, and we postponed any further discussion until mm. the next meeting. You don't have a reaction to this, though. No, I think we have to move something forward. Okay. I mean, I've, I've sat in these subcommittee meetings as well, and. Yeah. As Phil said, the last one was very brief, mm. um, and it, it, it's difficult to get the five members to meet and to find a time where we can all meet at the same time as well. Right. Every right. time we yeah. throw us around some dates, <laughs> right. <laughs> we get a date, and then yeah, yeah, we get a date, and then we get another date. That's where I got the idea. We get to cancel it. So um, the CAB has a meeting scheduled for December seventeenth. Um, we. I don't know if we have anything to, to discuss, but we left it on there just in case it right, came exactly. up. And if we can get forward on this, then maybe we can have a discussion, yeah, have a discussion about a vote on okay. the 17th of December. Okay. Well, 19th. Yes, I want to invite uh, Vanessa to make a comment. Yeah, why don't you come on up? As well, to Vanessa Alvarado, the liaison from the select board to RMLD. And Andy, you're welcome to make a comment after as well, if you like to. Point of clarification: What happens at the two-year mark? Is that included in the proposal? What happens at what? Excuse me. At the two-year mark. Two after year we, mark. after so the locked-in payments, what happens next? Uh, is the assumption that I, I would hope we don't reach that point. <laughs> but well, the the, point, the yeah. assumption would be that halfway through the year we'd get an idea of whether our right. revenue was still decreasing at the same rate, because this year it decreased not at one percent, but as I understand it, decreased two percent. So we went down 2%, not 1% per year. And we've been experiencing this for the last couple of years. So it's not it's an ongoing phenomenon, unfortunately, but it's fact-based. So we would hope that within the first half of the year, we could make a decision about what's happening to it and what can we afford yeah. to pay. And we'd all love to say it's actually leveled out <laughs> or going up, right. and we can continue to make standard payments or increase them somewhat. But, I, um, you know, to ask this question, I, 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 the way I understood the motion is that um, that over the next few months we would have a new formula that right. we could, okay, that's, that's that the goal really, is that we have some new information that would create a formula so that after the two years we would now know what the next payment right. should be in advance, right? And, and, and today's formula is actually mixed, right, because the above-the-line payments are on net plant, but they're distributed on a percentage of kilowatt hours used by each town. And the below the uh, line payments are uh, consumer price index uh, times net plant, as I recall. So uh, there's two different 
algorithms and methodologies already in place. It's not, I mean, is it complicated? Yeah, but we've been using it for 20 years. So changing it is not a big deal. Uh, the change is, do they, I, I know, I, in a minute, the change, uh, if we need to change, we're only doing this because we need to face reality and that we're going to running out of money. And Fun we're cap. running out of money to fund the RMLD and keep the reliability high. And nobody in the audience there or in this room wants to see that happen. On a personal basis, if your income goes down, you stop spending. You have to. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're end up in debtor prison or somewhere else. It's terrible. <laughs> so, so the point is uh, we're facing the reality of the situation, hopefully, ahead of time and aggressively so that we can deal with it. And we want the town to be our partner in this thing, too, as well, and not just be, give us our money. Give whatever it is, we want our money. We would love to give you the money. <laughs> We'd mint the money if we could. But we have to be responsible to not just Reading, but to the four towns that we serve. And we have to keep coming back to that. It's not just about Reading. Vanessa, did you? Well, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I can appreciate Vanessa's concern. I think. At some early point or midpoint this coming year, hopefully we'll have the study completed and we can start, the payment's already frozen for two years, but we can start tying the kilowatt hours to the formula yeah, the and see what the- payment is not frozen for two years. Again, this is just a recommendation. Uh, right, so no, I'm not, just saying- We're if, not if taking this, any solid right, position. Right, we're saying have, if this comes I'm through, I mean, you know, solid for The three selectmen years. could come forward with their, the selectmen, sorry, your wrong term. Right, select <laughs> The board. select board could come forward right. with their own proposal right. that says we freeze it for five years. Yeah. Let me, so let me yeah. restate. Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. if the <laughs> motion were to be approved as stated, okay, the payment is frozen for four, peer, four payments. Before that, we'll be able to track the new formula because we'll have correct. kilowatt sales, right. and we'll have some indication if it's draconian, if it's the same, if it's better. And as I said earlier, I think if you can put in a, the subcommittee can consider having a six-month notification period. So, because the problem is you could have it tracking even until the year, and then the new year. <laughs> could have a drop, right? It, it, we don't know what that's going to look like. Right. But with a six-month notification, now the town has an opportunity to say, okay, what does that do to our, our running of the town? And then I would also say there's all the, always the opportunity for the town and RMLD to get down and say, okay, what do we think? Or are there other options? But, I mean, that, what we're trying to do is be predictable for RMLD but also sensitive to the town spending. So that's how I view it. Can I make a comment, please? Yeah. I, I just want to clarify, uh, because this was mentioned at the town meeting, uh, it's not the revenues going down. It's the kilowatt hour sales, That's right. right? The Sorry. revenue's not going down because I raised I the should. rate. Yep. Mm. So I can keep raising the rate, but we have boundaries. Which, you know, the mission is to stay competitive. We're in the middle of the pack. Which we're above the middle of the pack right now because I'm trying to fix the system. Sure, you can just keep going up. We can collect, you know, re rate of return 8% every year. We'll be higher than national grid because I'm still going to have to fix the system. Right. Mm. So we have boundaries right. that we're also trying to stay in. Mm. And staying in the middle of the pack uh, is one of them. And I rates. don't want to keep, yeah, I mean, yeah you're going to have some rate increases because, you know, the cost of metals going up, you know, the cost of transformers, all of the uh, storms and stuff that happen in the south. The Power supplies The cost going of up. wires right. going up. Um, you know, you, you have to have engineers. You, you can't just let everyone go. I mean, so there are boundaries that we have to stay within uh, in, in this whole calculation that I stated in my study, but um, I just wanted to clarify because I know that was pointed out at the town meeting. Thank you. Um, yeah. right. Not to criticize you, John. I just. It's okay. I, I, I should have known better. No, kilowatt no, hour no. sales. I'm very familiar with kilowatt hour sales. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is if you raise the rates, then you make economic development less attractive right that's the other part of the equation right. and you're taxing mm -hmm. rate payers basically it's an unvoted right. tax yeah. so. Vanessa other questions comments from you that was all thank you all right okay thank you um, I just like to wrap up what I was saying I mean oh, I, yeah. I haven't heard similar concerns as mine voiced by the select board liaison or by the Reading cab member so I mean if there if I'm if, if my concerns on those fronts aren't shared then um, you know I I, I respect this process and I'm prepared to support it. I sort of wish that it had said it, the move that it was a recommendation of the two subcommittee members 
but because I'm just concerned about what I said before. But well, no, you make a good point about process. We I should. Mean, okay. After listening to Neil and, and Vanessa and, and Andy, if you have anything to add, I don't know. If you yeah, can. Andy, would you like to make a comment? That was it. I mean, I just, yeah. I, I guess if you're here and you want to say something because you're the chair uh, of the select board, I would like to hear from you, um, but don't want to put you on the spot. Um, Come on up, Andy. Come on up, Andy. Come on up. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> now, I will reissue the uh, Robert's Rules of Order to uh, everyone on the board, which I did once before. <laughs> you know, it's a big, thick book about this big. Mm -hmm. I have an amendment to the uh, motion when you, get a, when you get a moment. I don't know okay. why you put the speaker in the hot speech. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we don't have a quorum. Vanessa, it's appropriate for her to speak. She's the liaison. Um, so technically, I'm a private citizen right now. Um, and um, But I would like to say that the same people who elect this board uh, elect the select board I agree. Uh, in the best interests of the, t of the town. Right, I agree. And I'd like to do right by them. I think we all would. Mm -hmm. We all would. And it's it's unfortunate that there's been this uh, logger, this jam. And uh, I look forward to working with with all of you and, yeah. and the select board in resolving this issue, getting past it, right. moving forward, and doing what's best for for the town, and as you say, you, you have to take into account the right rate payers as well. So uh, that's the spirit in which I hear this, and, and uh, I look forward to finally uh, yeah. resolving this. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Andy. Well, we share those sentiments yeah. as well. Thank you. Yep, indeed. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay, I also share those same sentiments with uh, Andrew, that we can all work it out. Uh, I do have a, a motion, uh, an amendment to my motion. If you would okay. accept, if the, if the second would accept it, I'd like to, you know, start by saying move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution to propose. Okay. So we add in Soft the word language. at the beginning of yep. the move is added at the beginning, and after the RMLD Board of Commissioners, we add it. We uh, adopt adopt a resolution. And then to propose, and then the rest of the motion reads. I would the same. accept that. Okay. Okay. Great. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think we should, we can vote on it now, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. We have plenty of discussion. All those in favor? Five zero zero. All right. The ball's moving. Yeah. Dave, okay. ask just a, yes. Uh, it might be helpful earlier than later to get a subcommittee meeting right. scheduled. Maybe yeah. it so, already has been. Um, my question would be to the select representatives here. When do you think you would like to have a meeting? When you can discuss, you know, present your 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 what you how your feelings. Would come up come up to the you need to come up to the microphone. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, yeah, <laughs> cable sorry, TV, that's... cable TV, yeah, you know. Have to do this, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, as long as it's not a quorum. <laughs> subcommittee would have to meet first I, from what I understand yeah that my question is really get a date for the subcommittee to meet but, uh, but the question is why would why would the subcommittee have to meet first I mean I the idea is is that you know we're now on record we're on yeah. at least got a resolution here I mean I wouldn't want to go into a meeting and have the selectmen say we need to okay thank you very much we'll go back and bring this back later I would think that maybe so, the, I mean, I the select board should, yeah. The, the motion, but, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, my recommendation would be for us to go back, report to our board, put it on the future agenda for the beginning of December so that we as a board can discuss their proposal based on that, based on feedback from Ray, yeah. um, then move forward to the subcommittee meeting. Perhaps it'd be, December's not a great month at the end, early January. Yeah, I would like to meet as soon fine. as we could. That's fine with me. Great. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's doable. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, please understand. This is to try to move the ball down the field. I, I, to use I, a, I, I, a football <laughs> analysis terminology. Very good. Yes. We won't say. What, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, 
Um, my one disclaimer is that we are in budget season. Uh, I understand that. Uh, so I'm going to thank you now, Tracy, for all the emails you're <laughs> So, so this will be in the, our board minutes, right? But right. perhaps we should get a copy to you that would be beforehand, great. just a straight whatever this is. Right. Yeah. You know, I'll have to find time to put this on the agenda okay. right. for, for the board. I think it can be done in December, even though it is budget uh, season. Um, and it's been necessary. We have a lot of meetings. If it would be helpful to have either Phil or both of us yes. there to also add any color commentary we'd be happy to do it uh, assuming we're, right. we're able yeah and yeah. Uh, if, just, if not you do it yourself that's fine too we'll have to bring our suit of armor maybe <laughs> first of all it's a public meeting so I couldn't yeah. stop you if I wanted well, of course <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a trick question in all seriousness if you'd like us to be there please let us know when we can at the time and place yeah. uh, I think it makes come. sense for someone right. to be there yeah right S same as Andy and I are here for this discussion I think yeah right. exactly right. Some part exactly. Of Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you both for coming Thank you. to this meeting. We appreciate it. Okay. No more questions for Andy and Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> they got ex extra exercise tonight, <laughs> too. No charge. So just and then the, the third part, part of you, Neil, that would meet the CAB uh, timetable That's also? Right. Yeah. In, in January? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll okay, so that's the whole thing here. So We're Tracy, done with that item. Can you circulate uh, dates? And Tracy, uh, would you get uh, Neil a Neil copy of of exactly what the yeah. proposal is here as well? I have my copy. I can go over with with after the meeting with her. Okay. Don't forget Wendy's chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Then we're on to you, number nine, gentlemen. the general manager's report. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm actually going to uh, ask for a delay in the in the policies, but I do have uh, I'd. A clarification discussion ah. on one of them. Um, the existing strategic plan policy delineates four strategies, a mission and a vision statement. And uh, the reason for the delay is that we were uh, supposed to meet with Mike Prisco, the chair of the select board for North Reading, was going to facilitate our strategic meeting for management. And uh, we couldn't do it on Wednesday, so I got to push that off. So I'd rather just give you all the policies at once. Um, so I'm going, I, we're going to change uh, the four strategies and tweak them a little bit and make sure we add some economic development to them uh, and send them back to you this, uh, this week. Uh, and then we'll just present them in, in December. But you'll get like four or five of them. We're still going to hold off on the OPEB and the pension one. We have some more things to work with Chris uh, on that, which is what we were working on earlier. <laughs> so is that okay? Yes. Uh, the next item was right. the AP process. <laughs> and um, so we've got, we got a spill over here. Oh, yeah, spill yeah. All right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, don't warn me. Right. Oh. Spill an aisle. Looks time. like he's all right. <laughs> yep. He's using, uh, no, no, he's using the I'm motion good. he just wrote to <laughs> sop it up. It's good. <laughs> Stacy, thank you for positioning. No, I did not use the motion. Away <laughs> 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 from Phil. <laughs> oh, God. Jokes. All right, Colleen. Continue. Um, Comic so relief. We talked last time about the counts payable uh, process, and um, you know, Tracy and I developed a procedure and review sheet. Because right now, when you come in and sign the AP, there's a little review sheet, and and we've put together a chart. Um, there's two things when you come in. There's you may ask for clarification, like you you want to sign the warrant, but you'd like some additional information. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two is. I don't really want to pay this one. I'm going to pull it out. But you must still sign the warrant. You right. can't hold the warrant up. Right. And what happens is that question gets filled out on the sheet, and we try very hard to make sure that we get an acceptable answer on that question so that invoice can go back into the warrant. Because if not, it's very time consuming to we do it. But it all still has to go to the town that same time period. So. Let's say you asked on a particular issue and you say, well, you know what, I don't want to sign this. Technically, we've already taken the service on. But if you wanted to pull it uh, and keep it pulled and you want us to rerun the AP, we can. Um, but does that, does that make sense? So there's two things. There's clarification 
-hmm. where you'd fill out the form and say, I want more information on this, sign the warrant, right. and then there's pull one and sign the warrant. But in both cases, you can't hold the warrant up. Right. It's still going to be paid. It still has to be signed by you, but you can... The one you pull will not be paid until you are happy with it. Oh. Right, but what that's... That's what I said. What we try to do is we try to get you an answer quick enough to get it back into that warrant. Otherwise, okay. it would be pulled, not okay. paid, and mm -hmm. put into the following week. So, okay. So you want to get it done quickly if we do pull on. We do try to get the answer back quickly, but it still has to be signed, whether that invoice gets paid or not. Okay. Yes. Uh, is this something new? Because the uh, last time no. I signed, I didn't see the... Here's what you put. Here's where you pull the... Uh... Yeah. We haven't changed the form yet. No, there's oh. no change. It's just a discussion at this point. Oh, but um, so maybe a suggestion would be that, you know, it's a notation. Maybe the form has a way to note whether you're pulling it or not. Correct. Yep. We're splitting it in half. And the only reason why I didn't send this out is because I had heard a rumor about doing this online. Is that a rumor? No? <laughs> no, I suggested that. I'll, I will own up. Okay, so, <laughs> not, not for accounts payable, it was for yeah. payroll. For accounts payable. So Wendy and I are going to talk about this more. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, tip, we make copies of the invoices, but there's also the POs, and there's a lot of things. And Wendy and I are going to look into it. So I will send you the, re, you know, the, all I'm doing is taking the existing thing that you were filling out to pull it or not pull it, and just clarifying it. I will send that to you. And Wendy and I are going to look into whether or not we can scan everything in and you can do it online. Because we want to keep up with the technology as well. But you will have the same exact documents in sure. front of you there that you would at home. Right. And if you're copying it, you're really scanning it anyway. So all you need is the memory to be able to do it. Well, do you want to go ahead? We, don't, we only copy the. Come to the microphone. Turn the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. <laughs> One day they're suggesting yes. that end of the I table is very I didn't say we could. I said we're comment. looking into it. Okay. <laughs> it's yes. not done yet. Yeah. No, I didn't say we could. I said we're looking into the rumor, <laughs> the request. Okay. okay. So, okay. Um, what was the question? Wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> online. Online. Online <laughs> approval <laughs> by <laughs> yes. commissioners. Okay. So, for the town of Reading, um, the, the process is that we send them a copy of just the invoice. They do not need any backup information because we've already done our due diligence in-house with, I think, three, four different signatures. Yes, right. So they just need a copy of the invoice. So if you want to do it online uh, yeah. through um, automation like this, we would have to scan in everything. So that would take uh, uh, a lot more effort. Oh, that's ridiculous. And, we all uh, live in town, you know. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm just telling you that. That's good. Okay. okay. Happy. Also. Yes. Um, to that same theme, although I understand it's, it would be a hassle to scan all that, what, it would be better, I think, to have an iPad instead of a written uh, piece of paper and a pen to write down what your question is in some little line. And then there's an actual electronic copy that you get that then you can share what the person actually asked with everybody else without deciphering chicken scratch or, or summarizing it or hey that's yeah. my writing to you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about myself here I, okay I, oh. I can't write anymore with, with oh, a sorry. Pen. <laughs> um, um, and also I just it means there's it means the actual question that was asked gets relayed you know as opposed to a, some rewording of it yes uh, Tracy I, I mean I don't think that you would have a problem putting an iPad or uh, getting them set up with you know it could be a direct email to you know the right people at the right time. That's fine. Yeah. You might be able to set up a, f uh, a form like Spry Point. Sure. Where you fill it out, you can go, and it has an automatic uh, destination. E emailing yeah. destination. So just to be clear, you'd be still coming in, but yep. rather than filling the form out, there's an iPad where you could go in and get the form and sign the form. And yeah, you just make the type, type your question in on the Type iPad. the question on yeah. the form. Good idea. We're, we're certainly not opposed to moving forward, but we're just not ready right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. And the detail, okay. there's no sense looking at the invoices if the detail isn't right. there. I mean, right, exactly. Right. We're really not proving this, I believe this is all coming up because that question is a very large bill from Duncan and Allen, <laughs> correct? That's basically one of the, and I don't know that. It was that same meeting. There yeah. might have been a couple issues around. Yeah, this. We, we still owe a presentation on on um, the legal. We just haven't had the agenda space for it, so we're still doing that. Um, no, this was more of the process of just making sure that if you have a question and you want to pull it, 
that you, you still have to sign it. You right. can't, we can't wait for the answer. It still has to go in. It has to go to the town. We're just so. trying to clarify the process because our hands are tied with the town of Reading, as you know. Yeah. And if they do not get the warrant, they will not cut any check. You know, unless we ask special, you know, with, with holidays and stuff, we do ask for yeah. special circumstances, you know. So you always sign the warrant, but if you don't want a bill to be paid, you so note it so on this. So what happens form. is when you sign the warrant, because so we're trying to prevent you from coming back in. You sign the warrant, you tell us you want to pull an invoice. And if we do not respond to you with sufficient information that you're happy with, we will redo the warrant. We will have to void the invoice and the check and everything in our accounting system. And then then that signed copy with the it will be actually hand crossed off literally sent to the town hall uh, letting them know that this was pulled so all the documentations there that you are pulling this uh, check uh, for more clarification this invoice you've signed the rest of them you're yep. good to go and the process doesn't delay and you don't have to come back in right. to sign it Okay, because we do have a timeline with the town of Reading. Right. Yeah. So maybe that iPad could have a, a, a line that says, are, are you pulling one item? If so, which one? Sure. And then that solves this whole problem. Sure. That's the second form we have. Okay. <laughs> second grid. <laughs> yeah. And I heard about a strategic plan, too. <laughs> oh. I, I just want to clarify what I, I know wasn't intentional, but at maybe it was last meeting we did have a lot of discussion I know the legal bill was one but in the whole process but uh, I am I speaking really for myself but uh, I have to say that the process of raising a question and getting a response and I say it's through Tracy because she's the person who manages it I've personally been very satisfied and mm -hmm. I think there's always been a, a, a reasonable answer or if there wasn't a reasonable answer it was always noted that if this isn't satisfactory please come back so Indeed. Uh, yep. we, if, if we, in the heat of battle, if we, <laughs> oh, no. if we uh, no threw, th threw, threw anyone under the bus, <laughs> it certainly isn't uh, meant to be Tracy. Tracy threw herself under the bus. But <laughs> <laughs> didn't need to. There was no need. Yeah. You're doing a great yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, absolutely, Tracy. As, as arduous as the process is, I mean, the clean audit opinion proves. Yeah. Absolutely. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations again. I always that. thought they should give you a letter saying that, that when you do a good job, you get no letter. When you I know. do a bad job, right. you get a letter. Or a gold right. star, at least. Something wrong with that process. <laughs> okay. 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 So what are we doing? We're still We're on number calling. Two. Yeah, oh, so no. next I'd just like to um, to introduce our, our new Director of Integrated Resources, Chuck Underhill. Chuck, do you want to come up and say a few words and then make your your Integrated Resources presentation? Well, right into the fire, Go huh? right into yeah. the Oh, right. jeez. Right what right happened in. to onboarding and orientation? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Learned by experience. Mr. Underhill is not a stranger here. Yes. Welcome, Chuck. Yeah. To RMLD. Welcome to RMLD. Welcome Chuck. back, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening. Good, good evening. evening. A few words. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been on board almost a month now, four weeks. And uh, I have been charged with uh, figuring out what's going on, sort of getting organized, meeting the team, and oh, by the way, you're making a presentation at the next <laughs> board meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I wanted to do this evening uh, was update you. About a year ago, you received a presentation on a program that was being uh, implemented to help uh, reduce uh, power supply costs. Uh, this was a uh, program uh, using Nextera, one of the uh, vendors, and it was called uh, Transaction Facilitation Agreement, uh, or TFA for short. Um, the objective of the program was to mitigate risk, to stabilize rates, and to secure lower pricing. Um, as part of the process, um, we uh, worked to uh, define and uh, execute on price triggers and to um, be consistent with uh, the risk mitigation strategy uh, here at RMLD. Over the course of 2018, there were roughly 10 of these um, triggers uh, that were executed. Uh, they resulted in uh, purchases uh, through 2018 and 2019 
of blocks of energy. And year to date through 2018, uh, the net reduction in power supply costs is $1.9 million. We expect that that will continue through the rest of this year and uh, the sales will continue through 2019. Um, we are uh, not planning any triggers in 2019. Uh, we have received a follow-on proposal from NextEra uh, to do uh, physical load following. One of the things that happens in the wholesale market is that we bid our load in. We are subject to two types of risk when that happens. One, that there's an error, not a mistake, but a, a difference between the forecast and the actual result. This results in uh, unplanned power supply expenses. In addition, uh, we are subject to volatility in the wholesale uh, price market. Uh, the proposal uh, from NextEra, and I'm giving you a heads up on it uh, this evening, it'll be brought back uh, for further review and uh, disposition at the next uh, meeting. Uh, but the, uh, the program uh, basically uh, looks at uh, eliminating uh, load forecasting risk by simply being load following. They guarantee to meet the exact load, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So there is no uh, load following uh, risk on that. Uh, it takes price volatility out because they will have a fixed price uh, that, that we will pay. Uh, it maintains our renewable uh, resource portfolio and allows us to engage other resources going forward uh, that meet our strategic objectives, uh, whether it is uh, a renewable or whether it is a non-carbon resource, whether it goes to support other program activities that we are doing, such as the Shred the Peak program. Uh, all of those get adjusted in the uh, portfolio and then NextEra picks up uh, the balance on that. So, uh, so is that how they reduce their risk then by uh, by buying even larger blocks so they know that yes. we can be load following instead of load yeah. projecting? They, interesting. We are uh, in the parlance of the market an aggregator. We take small uh, loads like residential, commercial, uh, and believe it or not, even some of the large industrial customers, and we aggregate them into a single load, and that load goes into the market. Nextera is taking us, along with a number of other entities, and making an even bigger aggregation. That means that um, they are able to cut the, uh, the pieces into smaller and smaller bites, be a lot more accurate with mm -hmm. what they're doing, they're absorbing the, uh, the price indifference with the, with the resources that they have and essentially taking the market out of play. Huh. So, um, Very clever. It is. It is. Um, so uh, basically, uh, we looked at the energy budget um, and for 2019, what, what we had projected. Uh, the energy budget uh, was $28.9 million. Uh, NextEra uh, is bidding this in uh, at the Mass Hub, uh, including their fees, all in uh, pricing on this is $27.7 million. Net uh, expected savings to Reading is $1.2 million. Uh, there is one piece of risk that is left. Uh, Reading is in the NEMA market, the Northeast Massachusetts yep. market. Uh, NextEra transacts at the mass hub. There may be some slight uh, energy price differences between the two, but we have a $1.2 million uh, window of opportunity. That is, by the way, in addition to the savings that we are already achieving under the TFA. So wow. uh, we, we think that this is a... And this is going to be done on a, on a yearly basis or...? The first year, the 2019, is a pilot. <coughs> and uh, one of the things that is encouraging is that next era will be on their best behavior uh, in the pilot because they're very interested in, in making sure that it works. We have negotiated with them a quarterly review and tweaking if we find that there are things that 
uh, neither side anticipated that we can do to improve uh, the product or the results. Uh, this is a one-year pilot. At the end of 2019, or nearing the end of 2019, we're going to take a look at uh, both of the options uh, that NextEra has uh, worked with us on and evaluate whether it's one, the other, or both uh, that can provide uh, savings uh, to RMLD and how those will work going forward with some of the other things that we want to do. Uh, this includes the, the programs to develop uh, electric loads through electric vehicles, uh, HVAC systems, uh, et cetera. So uh, it's putting everything into the integrated resource plan and seeing uh, how it all works out. With the reduction in our kilowatt hour usage, uh, how does that impact in the plan? Do you have any sense about that? Well, 2019 has the forecasted loads in it. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to go into all of the, the details, so uh, I'll have to get back to you on, on where some of that load sugar's off. But um, right now, that's in there, that's in the numbers. Yeah, going going forward, uh, we'll have to see what uh, the programs that we're looking mm -hmm. at uh, will do to either stabilize or increase kilowatt hour sales. Sounds like a great program, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. once you get hooked on this, you're probably in it for the long term, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I maybe see? So to go back from the beginning, uh, if you recall, several years ago, when well, when I came, actually it's been five. I just got five my years. five year pin. Yes. Oh, happy That's anniversary! Yeah. <laughs> um, power was essentially being purchased once a year here. So there was a lot of opportunity to change it into tranches, you know, price and time triggers based on four-year historical values and stuff like that. So you're buying more often. And um, so I asked you in a strategic plan if we could change that once a year to run this pilot. And as Chuck has done his analysis, and so glad he's here hitting the ground running because um, this is a specialized niche. Um, you know, to, to tell me what the value was for year one for our first pilot. And um, so it was a success, and now Chuck's going to lead us into the second pilot. We're going to try the load, fo uh, prof uh, load following. We're going to continue the TFA for the future so we can still lock in past 2019. And at the end, when Chuck gives a presentation, we'll, we're going to come up with what our power strategic is going to look like. And it might be a combination of the both, a little bit. We're not really sure yet, but you can see when we put this one on, you can't keep squeezing it more and more and more, right? right? Yeah, that's where I was so going, So we're getting yeah. a little bit more out of it, um, but we're load following on a year that we've already squeezed it. So to say we we're going to get even more is great. But the market keeps changing, so you can't say, okay, this worked great, we're going to do this for 20 years. You have to keep looking at it, mm -hmm. which is great, because Chuck will look at it every year, and, and we'll just keep tweaking it. So as long as you guys are all happy with the fact that this strategic thing is going to keep moving based on, on the market and the environment, you know, environmental concerns and things like that. We'll, we'll keep going. But there will be a point where, don't put it in my evaluation, we want you to get this percentage more. I mean, it <laughs> right. gets to the point where I've squeezed it less and less to death. Get, yeah. so. I'm curious how, Chuck, you go back and figure out that we made, was it 1.9 million we saved last year or something? How do you figure it out? How do you know what you would have paid the old way? Because the <coughs> contract sets up uh, what's called the mark or the, or the price point. And this is a comparison of mark to market. So if we had been buying in the market, uh, we would have paid the one. What is it? A software million. program you can plug in, or is it? Is, uh, does Nextera there, feed there, that to you? Nextera gave it to us, but yes, it is a software program, and we have uh, the data. We could run the model ourselves. Uh, I would have to build it. Colleen, can I have more resources? <laughs> <laughs> well, you are taking a number of points. You're not playing Monday morning quarterback every single day, all uh, every hour. Right. You're picking points along and doing your comparisons and comparisons and comparisons. So I'm not, we're what not the picking the day that we would have, the mark to market would have been the most. Right. We're picking multiple days yep. 
and then so you're looking you know, what Nextera did for you, what the market was when that price. Yeah, but more than just bought. the one day. I wouldn't pick the day that it was the most expensive because then it would look like I saved the most. Right. You know what okay. I mean? So you're picking multiple days. Got it. So um, it's like, yeah, sampling. that was going to be my next yeah, question. Go, yeah. Going out on very, very dangerous territory here, I'm, I'm going to make a minor, very, very minor, uh, practically meaningless correction to what Colleen just said. Oh. <laughs> um, like, Wendy, must be the it, it, it is not a evaluation of a slice, okay? This is, when we buy a block or, or a tranche of power, we buy a certain amount of it over a, a period. Time. And so every hour that's included in that sale at that price is included in the analysis. So the 1.9 is a cumulative savings for all of the tranches since they have been in effect. Okay. So it is, a, it is an actual historical analysis, and it is a summary. So it's a very accurate number yes, of the savings. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, that's, um, I apologize. That's an update from my last discussion with Nextera. So thank you, Chuck, for coming. You well, what they, were, what, what they were saying at the meeting, because I was there, is that it changes every time you run it. And the reason that it changes is there are more kilowatt hours that are in there, and there are more variable hours of... Uh, market pricing that are in Good. there so right. yeah. it, it but once you've you've taken that snapshot in time the historical numbers are accurate to that point we're just adding more information to it okay so right. it, the the savings can move uh you know if we reach a period where the market actually uh, outperforms uh the locked price of a mark uh, then you know that will start to erode it a little bit. But uh, right now we're at 1.9 million uh, going forward. So we, we're pretty comfortable that uh, we're, we're in the right direction here. That's great. Well, great. where Thank I come you. from, that deserves some calling yeah. in. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Two million. Yeah. Right. Take it. It was a team effort. It was. Yeah, we, oh, the we whole made, team. We did sure. a team. It was yeah. good. I will note that this is occurring on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, timing is everything. Right. <laughs> She'll remind you when not so good things happen on your watch, too. I'm gone by then. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it is a testament to that change can be, you know what I mean? People are resistant to change, but you know, it's what's good about change is you can change it again. You know? Absolutely. So, right. right. Don't be hard on my car. I had to really, you know, pull teeth to get this to go, so I'm very happy. That's great. Good. Anything else, Chuck? Board. Um, I will open it up. I don't know whether uh, yeah, any, other any questions of the commission members have uh, questions Neil, about too. me. Uh, just, it's just nice to see Chuck again. <laughs> Mr. Solis says hi from the great beyond. <laughs> 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 Phil and I actually that. discovered that we had relatives working in the office at uh, Reading High School, Reading oh. Memorial High School. Yes. Uh, apparently, Phil's father was a guidance counselor uh, and sat uh, adjacent to my cousin, who was the administrative uh, office manager sure. uh, at, in Reading High High. at Reading High School. Knew her well. Knew her well. Mm -hmm. You have something, Dave? Yeah. Welcome, Chuck, by the way. Thank you. Um, I, has lo this load following uh, ability to, to do the kind of um, purchasing you described been around for some time, no? I mean, what, what's what's different now that, we're, that we do it now and we weren't doing it 10 years ago? Or I have absolutely no idea why Reading uh, didn't you. do it 10 years ago. Uh, I was busy implementing it in Danvers at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. Change is difficult yeah. here. It's been difficult. So... This is a big movement. Okay. Well, the good news is we did it. You did, did it. it. The yep. team did it. Here's and you're going to ask us to vote on this next meeting. We're going to vote you, on it. You will get a more formal presentation okay. uh, on it. Uh, I do have a draft of the agreement. Mm -hmm. um, we are making some final tweaks to it uh, to uh, hopefully improve its performance during the pilot phase. Mm -hmm. And then we will present the final document for uh, approval and Execution. Great, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Chuck. Very briefly, I I wouldn't mind a quick synopsis of your background. I haven't really got to know you well. I'd just be curious of where you came from and your experiences. I was born in Ideal Hospital in Endicott, New York. Uh, <laughs> okay. No. We'll um, I went to the University of Vermont. I studied civil engineering. Uh, graduated. Uh, 
went down and logged oil wells for a little while in Texas, went out to Idaho, started a master's in transportation planning, um, applied for and was accepted to the Peace Corps, did two years in Morocco, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, Hamid very much appreciates. <laughs> <laughs> um, came back, uh, took a job with an engineering company, the economy in Vermont tanked, which it does every two years anyway and uh, found myself uh, going into Green Mountain Power and convincing them that I was a marketing analyst. Uh, got involved with designing electric utility rates, uh, had a phenomenal mentor, and uh, after a couple of years, I got a call to go work at the Vermont Public Power Supply Authority. Right. Uh, they were spending too much on rate cases, so I went up and built a group uh, to provide rate case services to 15 municipals. And now the story gets interesting because in the uh, early 80s, the electric utility industry looked very much like it did in the 50s. Mm -hmm. There hadn't been a lot of transformation. Mm -hmm. Now, along comes integrated resource planning, energy efficiency portfolios, uh, strategic management. Uh, ISO New England started up in 1999, and uh, these small municipals all needed uh, some sort of response to that. So I spent 25 years building models and uh, Vermont comprehensively regulates its municipals. So uh, everything that we did was being uh, stood up in front of um, the Vermont Public Service Board. Um, we, uh, and I had all of those skills and uh, started a consulting business. My first client was Danvers. Hmm. Uh, Colleen had uh, just let uh, her uh, then uh, power supply engineer retire, uh, and I was brought in to uh, do some training. Uh, she said, uh, you know, well, we don't have anybody doing power supply. I said, so make me an offer. You wouldn't want to come down. Make me an offer. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't like it. It's a long commute. Make me an offer. <laughs> okay. She made me an offer. And I've been down here and uh, working uh, ever since. Um, while I was at VEPSA, uh, I believe uh, the comment was already made uh, that I came down and did a cost of service study uh, here in Reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, I have family uh, that was at Pratt Street uh, for several generations. So uh, I've got a history and some ties with the community here. That's great. But Good. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Mr. Soldi took great umbrage to the to the study. As <laughs> 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 only Mr. Soldi could. <laughs> Colleen, couldn't have you found a more qualified candidate for <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Chuck. Yes. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Welcome. Yeah, thank Let's you. Move on. Great yeah. presentation. Move Thanks, on, Chuck. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me. Uh -huh. Me. Follow that money. one. He wants to do a really fast uh, report here. Yeah. And we need to go on commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to speak from the podium, a guest yeah. speaker. Huh? And what do you what do you think, Hamid? You have another engineer on the leadership team with you and Colleen. There's three of you engineers yeah, now. That's right. That's not a bad thing. They're taking over. Okay, do you have my first slide? That's, yep, that's, that's clear. great. Good evening. Uh, uh, I'm glad to present the month of September report to the you board. Like you okay, the first page and second page, you see that, you know, the uh, capital improvement projects, yeah, the year-to-date spending, and the remaining balances. So you see that, you know, for uh, engineering and operations, uh, including the routine constructions, we spent $143,130. That brings the year to date uh, to $453,426. The next slide, you see the facilities, IRD and IT capital improvement projects and purchases, uh, which shows you the year to date spending and also the remaining in the budget on the far right column. Uh, that brings the month of September spending $302,913, and uh, you see on the far right what was budgeted year-to-date is $1,213,238, and uh, it was budgeted $7.6 uh, approximately. That's the one that the board approved, 
and we've got 6.4 million almost left uh, remaining to spend. <coughs> the next uh, slide is showing you the routine maintenance. Basically, these are the maintenance programs that uh, were uh, created back in 2014-15. We are following that program. Uh, the transformer replacement through September, the Padmont transformers, these are underground type transformers. We have made uh, more uh, progress on those. So we are uh, replaced 32.12% of those and overhead approximately 22.5%. Uh, this is not really a g you know fast pace. Uh, we've been trying to do with what we can with our uh, re available resources. So there is a proposal that is coming up that is going to go through GM and also Wendy trying to expedite that program if we can, uh, depending the budget availability and fund availability. Uh, the poll inspection program we inspected poles, so 246 poles have been replaced so far. 195 of those been transferred. So these transfers, they're going to be taking them seriously. We're going through all four towns, and you're going to see that you know the numbers are <coughs> decreasing. We don't have those crazy numbers like we, we used to have, like 100, 120. So we are making more transfers, so to get rid of those double poles that they're ugly. <coughs> the inspection of the feeders, we've uh, inspected all of these uh, feeders. Uh, the, this is a quarterly program that the crews, they go out through the streets making sure that everything is working properly, there are no signs of deterioration or failures, possible failures, and we take, can take care of those. The manhole inspection program and porcelain cutout uh, replacements, those are ongoing as we're making uh, improvements throughout the communities Tracy, and also can you, streets. Can you put that on slideshow? It's, on, it's not on the full screen. You know, the uh, bottom, I think it's uh, it should bottom be on right. Move it over one. Yeah, there you go. Then one more over. Yeah. One more. I think that does it. Does there it? You, yeah. you can do it on the top too. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Blue screen. Oh, there it is. There you go. Yeah. Hey. That's much hey. better. You're <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So those are the programs that, you know, well, uh, the, the, they're going through the, as we go through these communities, we upgrade those and we're inspecting more manholes and uh, replacing those porcelain cutouts. The more uh, routine maintenance, on the next slide, you see the tree trimming, 69 spans have been taken care of in the month of September, 133 spans through the month of September, basically year to date, uh, we've spent, uh, we've done. Uh, substation maintenance, we do the infrared scan of the substations uh, monthly, and also we do uh, every other month, we do the, all the parks, the industrial parks, and we haven't found any problems, uh, not so far, uh, especially uh, during the summer because of the good maintenance program that we have uh, created and we are going through. Uh, the underground subdivisions upgrades, these are the ones that, you know, uh, we've been talking about. We've got about 60, 65 subdivisions through all four communities that they need to be upgraded. So we have recently completed all of these that, you know, you see the list. I'm not going to go over them. But lately we completed the Shasta Drive uh, as well as, you know, the latest, the Long Hill Lane. These are the ones that, you know, they recently were finished. But these are the lists in, uh, that, you know, were com completed by... September. The ones that are in progress, the ones that they're working on, and we got a long list of these uh, subdivisions, and we're going by the age, so we have a system. So as uh, you know, we see that, you know, and we inspect those uh, transformers, the entire infrastructures, and then we prioritize which one is going to have to go next. Mm -hmm. So I wish we could do them all at once, but unfortunately it won't be possible. But uh, the ones that, you know, recently was finished among these that, you know, you see that in progress, Turner Drive, which I would like to thank uh, the select board, also the town uh, administrator for North Reading to cooperate with us because we went in front of the board asking them to set a pole, uh, to let us set a pole across the street, uh, avoiding the crossing and digging on Route 62 with the congested uh, utilities. So uh, they were very cooperative and uh, they approved that and it, that project was just finished. So in the winter time, we have the loop uh, available just in case that you know there is a problem in the, the, that area which I don't anticipate. Uh, and thank you, uh, Town of North Reading. 
Uh, also, they, they, they finished the Green Briar Drive. That one, another critical one that it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's in, it was work in progress. It was a, these are big projects. You're talking about, you know, seven to ten transformers that you have to go through. And uh, it's been really a challenge trying to uh, upgrade everything because you touch one and then you, b before you know it, the whole neighborhood needs to be dug or, you know, uh, uprooted. So it's been going really uh, good, and, but we've got a long way to go. So as uh, I've been saying uh, all along. The next one is the Devil Poles. We got the ownership. It's uh, basically 50-50 between RMLD and Verizon. We got approximately 17,800 poles. The custodial uh, for the Reading is split. North Reading uh, is RMLD, and uh, Linfield and Wilmington is Verizon. So uh, that's how it goes. The next slide uh, is... You know, just a quick comment on that. Sure. You know, I, I look at the number of poles there, and I'm going... When 5G comes in, hopefully we'll be able to have a good revenue program from <laughs> the carriers <laughs> to, to mount on our poles yeah. and to, to connect to our fiber optic. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. the 17,000 poles will I mean, review that's those. a huge amount. So, yep. yeah, like my only concern uh, on that is that as long as they don't interfere with the electric operations. Of course. Right. For maintenance of the well, poles. Well, they might use more electricity yeah, for their amplifiers, that's, that's right? That's fine. But we are open-minded about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's a good news. Yeah, <laughs> the next one is the engines, the engine program. That's the one that basically ball in court in which utility is going to go next uh, in order to do the transfers on the poles, the, the double poles. Linfield, you have the, you see the numbers. The RMLD has 16 transfers and one that it's in dispute. Uh, North Reading, we got uh, the RMLD has eight transfers and nine pole uh, but pool uh, poles that you know we need to get out of the ground. RMLD has a in Reading has 16 transfers and pole bots to be removed are nine. And Wilmington RMLD has 27 transfers and four pole bots that they need to be removed. So you see that the numbers are going down. But again, this is something that you know as we go through these uh, uh, communities and uh, making more improvements. You know, you're going to see more and more polls. So when these numbers, they go up, uh, I'm happy. But maybe, you know, uh, we're not getting them fast enough, but we try to catch up and, you know, do remove, uh, do the transfers as fast as we can. We don't have any control over Verizon and Comcast. That's the only the problem. So, uh, so it depends on how much resources they, they, they put into it. All right, the next slide is basically the reliability indices. You see all of them, uh, the SADI, KD, and SAFI, they're below the national and also the regional averages. Although I'm expecting the SAFI number that it's getting close to the national, the, the regional average, 0.61 for this year is going up because of all of these outages that related to weather related the storms mm -hmm. and also the water table is high these trees that they're falling yes. left and right in all communities so these are creating these pockets of outages that you know this time but it's going to go up when the water table is higher more trees fall oh yeah yeah, yeah exactly right. because we, especially the, the pine loose. trees the pine mm -hmm. trees yeah. are they got shallow roots yeah and uh, you know with all when the water table is high the soil you know it's not can't the, hold the them. trees are not yeah. exactly yeah. or not uh, the roots are not as stable in, in the woods behind my house at least five or six trees have fallen over yeah. just because of the water because of the water yeah. the water just accumulated <coughs> had such water this yeah last month yeah. I mean, it's amazing it really has been the whole the whole fall really yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the weather report uh, that, of the that's RMLD board meeting right That's there. right. <laughs> 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 okay. Commissioner, uh, chair, responsibility. <laughs> it's been exceptional. Back to you. This year has been exceptional, I know. Uh, so the next slide shows the causes of outages. The five-year average is blue, and the red is basically the 2018 year to date. You see all of those numbers, they're coming down, uh, although it's getting better and better. Uh, some years it's gonna these are gonna vary depending on the weather conditions storms and you know here but uh, uh, We are moving uh, in the right direction. That's what it shows basically That concludes my report if the board has any questions by all means. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. yeah just curious and maybe we talked about it. so starting in 2019 right will, will you be looking at uh, 
a new fiscal year comparing to January to June last year? Or how, how are we going to be? We're going we're gonna to go by the calendar year. We're still on the fiscal year, but what we did, the budget that, you know, uh, was uh, presented, it looked at the calendar year moving forward. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to get into calendar year. So these six months, we're going to close it as fiscal year. Yeah, and then, and then we're you'll start, start the new January. calendar year as of yeah. January 1st. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Amit. You're welcome. Yeah. You want to buy some things too, Hamid? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You want to go to my uh, bid? You ready for the motion? Yep, okay. motion. Move that proposal 2019 02 <coughs> for 750 MCM, right. whatever that means, that 15 kV power cable be awarded to Arthur J. Hurley Company, Inc., for $124,488 pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 164. Section 56D on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Second. Discussion, background. Sure, by all means. Uh, the MCM stands for Million Circular Mill. These are the size of the cables for underground getaways out of mm. the stations. We are upgrading those per booth and associates recommendations. So you've seen that in the budget for station four and station three. So out of that $124,488, uh, really, in reality, 97,403 uh, uh, belongs to the capital improvement projects, and the balance, which is $27,085, is for inventory <coughs> stock. Hmm. So that's what you basically voted on, uh, voting on, or voting okay. on. Uh, Any uh, other questions for Hamid or Mr. comments? Chairman, yep. just, just one item. Um, I just want to say that I intend to uh, abstain from this vote because Arthur J. Hurley is a client of a client. To and conflict. And, okay. probably, conflict and probably puts maybe a nickel in my pocket okay <laughs> all right but all those who are voting in favor put a nickel in Phil's pocket <laughs> <laughs> four zero one yes thank you congratulations <laughs> Phil <laughs> and Hamid Thanks. and you have something else to buy Hamid yeah another one yeah two more three more. two more yeah three more yeah. no get you the one move you want to keep on reading yeah let me more. keep going move that bid 2019-6 for electric utility excavation, including emergency excavation and construction services, be awarded to Tim Zanelli ex Excavating LLC for a not to exceed amount of $100,000 per year without written approval, pursuant to uh, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30, Section 39M, as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder on the recommendation general manager. Second. Second. All right, background to me. Okay, this is basically we are hiring the contractor for emergency work and you know the stuff that as we go through this development that we need to uproot everything and you know so we don't have to go for every single one of them to uh, to bid. Obviously, this is for anything under uh, the fifty thousand. So if it goes over fifty thousand, it's going to be a, a bid, former bid. So these are for routine construction type that you know we need to dig the streets and you know need some construction work to do ahead of this schedule in order to be able to uh, continue our improvements so we sent a bid out to 10 or 15 uh, 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 bidders and the lowest responsible responsive bidder was uh, Tim Zinelli uh, that you know he's been also the lowest for past uh, three or four years that I've been here so because he's a local contractor so okay. out of that, uh, 90,000 belongs to the capital authorization projects. This is the one that we use for the ones that, you know, the board voted on. Mm -hmm. And approximately $210,000 is coming out of the operational budget for unforeseen conditions, you know, emergencies and, you know, oil leaks or anything that, you okay. know, we need to. Any uh, questions or comments for the no. meeting? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Five zero zero. Yep. That's it, Hamid, right? Thank yep. you. Yeah, that's okay. it. What's that? I might have messed up on you. No, no. Uh, you know what? Phil and I were looking at two different sheets. We thought right. there were. Yeah. On, one, on my sheet, it was on one side, and this sheet, it was yeah. on the other. So yeah, you didn't mess up. I said the same thing. Yeah. We were just double counting, we Tracy. Double count. Thank you, Hamid. Thanks, Thank Hamid. It's always good work. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. General discussion. RMLD board meetings. We have Thursday, December 20th. Mm -hmm. I think that's we already cleared that for everybody, right? Yep. And um, so that's no longer tentative. It's locked in. Okay. And then cab meeting. You just told us about one. The night. It's the one the day before that. Do we have somebody doing that one? 
Yeah, I uh, I may have a conflict because I didn't know the Will date. Will you be but discussing I'll, the, I'll work it out the payment to the town at that meeting? You're available then? Well, well, but I need to if we have the meeting. Yeah, so September probably 19th. You're on for January. I'll do January. Yeah, probably there's going to be discussions to the payment. I just booked a train. Tom, there's probably right. discussion of payment to the town on that one, so I probably can go for you. I should go for you on that one. He's going to go for you. Because there's going to be a discussion of the payment, the payment of the town. He's going to do the 19th. All right. Okay. <laughs> Tom seems upset by that. <laughs> He's feigning disappointment. I almost had it. It was, it was right within my grasp. You yeah. almost got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A couple disappointed guys to my right here. Bill. Well, this thing, welcome to come. <laughs> but you are lucky to do it in January. Well, no, with uh, a little luck, you may have the town payment uh, issue. Again. In select board <laughs> meeting, you both are going to try to go, it sounds like. Right. They'll, right. They let us know. Yeah, I think we know what it is. Idea. I mean, yeah. Okay. Right. Without let any conflict, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And are there any uh, any last comments by anybody? All right, let's do this last piece. Do we, we make any, a motion? Do we have anything to discuss in executive session? Is there anything to discuss? There is an agenda, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think yes for. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Let's yeah. do this. Move that the RMLD board of commissioners go in executive session to consider the purchase of real estate and to discuss confidential, competitively sensitive, and proprietary information in relation to making, selling, or distributing electric power, energy, and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Okay, roll second. call vote. Go second, all Mr. right. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. O'Rourke, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Mr. Stenberg, aye. All right, that is the end of our meeting. Excellent. Good work. Yeah.